Hello there again. Um, in this session, which is sort of a Christmas special, we're going to see how to construct a helix. Right, three types of different helices. And what is a helix? First of all, a helix is the locus of a point as it goes around a certain diameter, but as it's turning around the diameter, it's also moving a certain distance. So it's rotating, in this case it's rotating that way and moving that distance to make a complete revolution. See, the line starts where, it's en where it ends. So that's one complete revolution which is called the pitch, that distance is called the pitch and that's the diameter of the helix. All right, And we're going to see how to construct a simple helix and its applications. What are helices used for? Apart from toilet paper. So here we have the pitch. So it's going to make one revolution from this line to that line. And here you have the diameter. It's going to make one revolution around that diameter. So the starting point, I'm going to take this point as a starting point. So the, the pitch is divided into 12 divisions as is the diameter. So each division of the diameter corresponds to one division along the pitch. So I've already divided the pitch into 12 and I've divided the circle into 12. What I need to do now is take the divisions along the pitch. So far all these are simply construction lines, so they should be done in 2H. Now I'm doing a, a right hand helix, so a right hand helix, by taking this as the starting point, is rotating clockwise around the cylinder, which would be moving that way. All right. So that, that doesn't really affect me in this part, it affects me if I'm doing a three dimensional a helix which has thickness and width. So that's my first point. Now it's very simple to construct a helix because each division you take along the pitch you move one division on the diameter. So that's the first point. That's the second point. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I'm halfway through. And that is your simple helix. All you have to do now is freehand join Now this helix doesn't give you the effect that it's going around a cylinder. Now the cylinder has to be taken as an imaginary cylinder in this case, but it is going out on the outside, on the front part, and then at the back side of the cylinder. So this is actually a line which is rotating outwards, then going backwards and coming back to us. And that's a, a simple helix. Now let's say, so it's, a, it's just a line, a line going around a diameter and moving along that pitch. If you wanted to construct it for two revolutions or for one and a half, you'll have to add to that pitch the number of divisions required. So if you want to construct one and a half revolutions, you don't divide the pitch into 18, you take that 12, divisions for the pitch and you take another six divisions equal to that and you add it to the pitch. So the pitch is always divided into 12. Now let's say the same helix we're going to convert it into a helix which has some thickness. For example a ribbon which is going around a cylinder, an imaginary cylinder. And the ribbon is the ribbon's thickness is equal to one fourth the pitch. One fourth the pitch would equal to three divisions. So there you have the thickness of the ribbon. Three divisions, one fourth the pitch. So I have a helix which is starting from this point and ended here. And another helix which is going to start from that point and should end three divisions down from this point here. So you start off a 
similar helix which should end so all I have to do is I'm going to add three equal divisions as the divisions I already have so I'll, I'll be able to finish off three divisions further down so another three divisions equal to these divisions so I have another pitch the distance of the pitch starting from this second point, the second helix and these divisions so these if planned ahead if you know how many you know, you already know the thickness of the pitch of the helix and how many revolutions you can finish these off straight away so I'm going to draw another helix which starts from there and then again I'm going to take one thickness on the pitch and one thickness on the diameter and if you realize each point is three divisions down from its corresponding point on the first helix so there I have the other helix I'm going to line in freehand or flexi curve or fringe curves with that point. And there you have the second helix. Now, here I'm already getting the hint of a 3D object. If I join in the edges of the helix. And I should also, if this is a right hand helix, rub off this part or at least draw it in as a hidden detail. So that bit there is being covered by the first overlaying part and that should be done as a hidden detail. So what I have now is this ribbon going round that way then coming back towards me now to make it I'm going to just rub off that part so there you have the helix with a thickness now usually these helices come with an inner diameter as well because here all I have is this thickness here so it's something which has no three dimension. So if you add another dimension to it, so it has an inner diameter, so it's made out of a rectangular or a square cross section, it requires another two helices on the inside this time. So if you know the outside diameter, I've constructed the two helices from the outside diameter. Now the inner diameter, so let's say this has an inner diameter which gives us a rectangular cross section from here to there. So this is, as an application, you can see that it's either a spring, a rectangular cross section, a spring. or some other type of helix which has a rectangular cross section. So I've constructed that rectangle, that rectangle, this distance would be given as would be this distance. And that's the cross section of the material we're using to construct this spring. Now I've already constructed the helix on the outer diameter. What I need now is the helix on the inner diameter. So what I need to do is I'm going to construct another circle on the inner diameter and I need another two helices on that smaller circle. So now this is the confusing part because you might confuse lines coming from the bigger circle with lines coming from the smaller circle. So 
I'm going to start off again. Let me zoom into that part. A helix starting off from this point. The lines only coming from the smaller circuit. So this line is there. This line, same divisions on the pitch, but different divisions on the smaller circuit. This is a common point because it's a midpoint. There. And see that you're always corresponding with the larger helix. So that was the midpoint. I've reached the midpoint on the smaller helix as well. And then I'm going up again. One division down, one division inwards on the smaller circuit. Common point. Make sure. And here I've reached the first pitch point, the first pitch distance. So here I should have in fact I've marked the diff uh, point by mistake. It should be here. So I've got an exact same way as I did the bigger helix, but a helix on the inside diameter that is the smaller circuit. So what will you, you what you'll see now is just lines going over each other. The tricky part would be where to darken, where to leave as hidden detail. Now I'm going to start off the fourth helix. So I've got started one from there, one from there. That's the third one. Now the fourth one. Always three divisions down on the smaller circle. There. There. Common point. There. 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 The common point again. There. And I've reached the end of the pitch. And that gives me the fourth helix. And as you see, I've ended up with another rectangle here, similar to my first rectangle. There you have four helices. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to darken in the parts which should be left. give you the idea that it is that is going around all right so this line here so the first one I did should be darkened all right that part should be darkened for a right hand helix the second line you should have three quarters of the way showing a dark outline. Now here you only get that part showing and what we have here is the inner part here I always look for this banana shape here that gives me darkening that part and that part that part there so remember this is coming towards us so I want to show this part here 
and this part there. You should see cross section coming towards you. 